Here is a 2024 BMW i4 E35 Grand Coupe and Alpine White over Cognac interior. This is off the G26 platform, which is the four series. That's why it's a little bit more unique because you can option a gas variant and you'll still get the same style on the exterior or an all electric variant, which will give you charging times at this one seven hours for a level two. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm going to go over the specs and details, some pros and cons, and a problem I have with the i4 starting with LED headlights and daytime runnings that integrate into the four series grill that's a little bit more bold and in your face, but what I like about it when you're putting it with the white. You get the gloss black elements because we have the shadow line trim. BMW badging gets the blue around the emblem and gloss black elements on the side curtain. You're still getting around five inches of clearance and you have the more performance structure hood, but unfortunately there's no frunk. So if you're thinking about the Kia EV6, at least you could still fit some magazines underneath the hood. Whereas here, you're gonna lose a little bit of cargo capacity, but you're also expecting that because this is a four series that's electrified, in which the single motor is going to produce 282 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque paired to a single speed automatic transmission. You're still going to reach 60 at under six seconds with the top speed at 112 miles per hour. Now we do have some packages. This one's a little bit more decked up. M Sport package, the M Package Pro, which is getting these 19 inch wheels and then the brake calipers that are red. This is M Spec, so you're getting four piston calipers in the front, a single floating caliper in the rear, the shadow line trim, that's gonna be on the exterior mirror, mirror housing and across the window trim with a touch of it before the lower skirt so it gives that dynamic look. Achieving 111 MPGEs for the city and 107 MPGEs for the highway. So we're getting closer to the Tesla specs in which in five minutes for a DC charge, you're getting nearly 100 miles. It's a 45, 55 weight distribution. So you could take some of the bins on your all electric variant. And to shed weight, the body pan Panels are lightweight aluminum. The suspension components, the chassis with a short overhang, and the battery is placed an inch and a half lower so it gives a lower center of gravity. And because of all of this weight that we've shed, it's about 15%, which gives us about nine miles more of range. So BMW is not just thinking performance, they're also thinking longevity whenever you're driving longer distance. And optioning the i4 E40, that's gonna drop your zero to 60 by 0.4 seconds. You go into the X drive, which is an all wheel drive, that's gonna drop it to 4.9 seconds. So you don't have to go to the M50 variant in order to get full blown performance. And you'll still get some range because once you go up to the M50, yes, you're getting a zero to 60 at 3.7 seconds. The range though decreases to 227 miles. It does have 536 horsepower and 586 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot out of the Grand Coupe, but you're also spending about 17 grand more. So depending on if you're needing the full blown performance, I would say the sweet spot will be the E40 or X-Drive 40. Gloss black for the trunk lid spoiler. The lower gets the gray inserts for the diffuser, LED taillights, and because this is a Grand Coupe, it's a hatchback. Power lift gate going into the Grand Coupe at 16.6 .6 cubic feet. And because it's a hatchback, you have a large opening with a little storage nook on both sides. You can lift this up as well. Underneath the floor, you can put your charger, split fold the rear bench in the back, if you're tall like me. And that's going to increase the cargo to 45.6 cubic feet. Twelve way power seat adjustment for the front with the Sensatech Cognac interior, manual cushion extensions, memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. What I like about the i4 is it's a four series but electrified. Starting off with the Tetracon, which is now a frozen metal mesh. That is the elements that is going to wrap around the center of the dashboard with the ambient lighting. The curved BMW one panel, two screens. We also have the heads up display, auto dimming rear view mirror, 
has wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. This has iDrive 8.5. Put it into reverse with a 360 degree reverse camera with backup assist. 3D view so you can go all around the vehicle or simply use the iDrive to do the same thing. Click into the car wash and it's going to show the trajectory in the front so you don't scratch the upgraded wheels. Going into a wireless charger, USB 12 volt. Here is the digital BMW key and the actual key fob for the i4. You get the Tetra gun that's going to go around the rocker and the iDrive. It's going to be more sporty. It opens up into a long storage pocket, just not so deep, with a USB. Leather wrap steering wheel. It's heated, M spec multi function. The gauge cluster can go through an array of content for the driver, including turn-by-turn -turn navigation. You can also option the AR, and you can do the same thing for the heads-up display. The dashboard and the door panels configure it together, and the ambient lighting pretty much runs straight into everything. It's going to be more sporty, one touch up and down for all the windows, and these are edgeless windows because it's the Grand Coupe. Storage, the beverage holder will be stationed in the front with a moonroof. For the back seat's headroom, and this is because it's a hatchback. Leg space is going to be a little bit tight if I'm driving, but it's still workable. You get cup holders and a armrest in the center. Third climate control setting, two USB ports, air vents, and storage behind both of the front seats. The door is going to have a storage pocket that's long, just not as deep, and you can kind of put a little bit of storage or maybe a cell phone here on the grab handle. Sliding into the center, the floor is not completely flat. The rails, they're not pushed up enough, so you're going to be sharing some feet space. Button shoulder space also because of the width of the vehicle. It's a little bit more sporty, but I can still sit into the center because of the hatchback design. 282 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, reaching 60 at 5.8 seconds. It's pretty quick. 45, 55 weight distribution. You, know, you can feel the lower center of gravity when you're taking some of the bins. Just rips around the bins. Unfortunately, the exit, we're going to have to slow down. Now it's nowhere near the M variant, 536 horsepower, 3.7. I have a review on that, but still good. The iconic sounds come into play and you can turn that on or off into the iDrive. I like that it's still a car. It's not just an electric variant. Even though people just want to stop and pull out in front of you. Look at this thing, man. And no, I was actually going the speed limit around that bend. They should have stopped. I had my turn signal on as you heard the indication. It stays planted. I like the, the feel to it because it still feels sporty and athletic. The iconic sound makes it feel a little bit more playful, especially when you are taking some bins in the road. But one thing about electric vehicles is when you give it full throttle a lot, it not only eats your battery, but it also hurts your stomach. It will give you that nausea feel which will take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros is you're still getting the fun spirit drive out of BMW, even though it's electrified. Grand Coupe, so you're getting extra cargo capacity. You could still fit occupants in the back seat. Charging time isn't too bad, around seven hours on a level two or a 240 volts. It's off the G26 4 Series platform, so it's 100% 4 Series, just electrified. Now in the con, you do lose cargo because we do not have a frunk, but they optimize some cargo capacity because underneath, in the cargo, you get a little bit more storage, so you can at least put your charger there. You're getting maybe four cubic feet more storage capacity. And because it's all electric, 
just feels more futuristic. We have upgraded wheels. The sound deadening is not going to be as airtight because you're not hearing a motor. Even with the iconic sounds, it's not going to filter in unless you're mashing on the electric pedal. The brakes are fine because you get the four pistons in the front. I would say the big problem that I have with the E35 is it's around 17 grand inexpensive compared to the M50 variant. But when you feature this up, this is about seven grand more than the M50. So it kind of puts you at, should I just get full blown performance? I'm gonna lose 50-ish mile range. But I mean, you're two seconds quicker, zero to 60. So it's hard for me to say, get a lot of features. That's why it's a big problem for me. I would option this about mid-grade, so I would get the M Sport brakes, the M Sport package, probably would get the curve panel with the heads-up display mixture. The sweet spot, realistically speaking, is the X-Drive 40, because you're getting pretty good performance and you're getting in the fours, the zero to 60s, charging times isn't bad, your range, you're still losing a little bit, but if you're trying to stay in the brand because you want a car that's electric instead of a spaceship, it's hard to option other vehicles because when you go into the EV6, it's gonna look a lot more futuristic. You go into Tesla, there's not a lot of, I would say, excitement. Don't get me wrong, fast vehicle, great range. Just, I feel like when you go Tesla, to me, it feels like I'm going to like a van instead of an SUV because I'm just wanting something to take me to point A to point B. Most people are not going to get a performance variant when they're at this price. And for those Tesla lovers, there's, like I said, nothing wrong with it. It's just, I want a vehicle that was built on the same platform as a combustion engine. And that's what you're getting when you go into the Grand Coupe for the i4. Opposed to other vehicles, they're all going this spaceship route or, oh, it's an all electric platform. I mean, if we're trying to actually go into the 21st century with this electric push, just hear me out now. Why wouldn't you put it on an electric vari variant platform, try to make it as eco-friendly, meaning use a lot more recycled materials, and look at where we're mining, because BMW is actually doing that. Other variants, they're using, I hate to say it, little kids, like four or five year olds. That's who's mining for the lithium. So when we're thinking, oh, we're doing such a great job, we're going all electric, think about what you're purchasing. Because at least with BMW, they are thinking about that. They are actually controlling what they're doing when they're building these vehicles. And the same thing, dynamically speaking, when they put the battery an inch and a half lower, giving a lower center of gravity for the vehicle, you can feel that on the bin, so it still feels like a dynamic vehicle, and yet, it's all electric. And that takes me to a bigger problem in which a lot of people don't configure. If you get these pre-owned with miles, they typically only last about 80 to 100,000 miles. And that's almost on all electric variants in which if you go Tesla, everybody knows it's gonna be expensive. You're near a good 20 to 30%, if not 40%, depending on the year, to actually replace the engine or the batteries. So when I'm thinking BMW, it's already an inexpensive vehicle. So that helps a little bit, but then I'm thinking hybrid, right? So a Toyota hybrid battery can cost anywhere from three to $7,000. So imagine what you're spending with this, but longevity and range is still a factor for me. That's why I still go combustion engine. But if I was looking to go all electric and if I was near an area that had a grid that's for it, because Florida doesn't really have that, then I would think this is a great variant to have because you're getting the range, you're getting the performance, and it still has that fun to drive spirit. I mean, check this out. The turn radius is about two lanes, and here we go. <laughs> Throws you back, you get the video game sound that pops in, and it's a grand coupe, so the family can fit with cargo. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 BMW i4 for our car review.